In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of electromagnetic waves. So in this playlist, we actually have quite a few videos that, concern, uh, that are concerned with electromagnetism. And one actually goes through each of these steps uh, in the derivation of electromagnetic waves from Maxwell's equations. In this video, I'm going to give a more general overview of what electromagnetic waves are useful for and how they're used to describe phenomena like light. So where does this all come from? Well, it comes from Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations are pretty much the most important equations in classical electromagnetism. Those four equations are pretty much the descriptions of all of classical elect electromagnetism. With the addition of the Lorentz force, and that tells you how charges respond to electric and magnetic fields. But besides that, those four equations are fundamental to electromagnetism in the classical uh, model of reality. So what are we going to do in this video? Well, we're going to talk about these two equations down here. So all of these steps are the derivation to get these two equations. And what can we notice from these two equations? What, what form do these equations take? Well, they are actually second order partial differential equations. They're not ordinary differential equations because they depend on more than one variable. They depend on time and they depend on the spatial coordinates. So the spatial coordinates and the time influence the electric field and the magnetic field. So the electric field and magnetic field depend on four different coordinates. They depend on space, which is uh, the spatial location is dictated by three coordinates, which in Cartesian coordinates is x, y, and z. And there's one temporal coordinate, which is time. And time is always flowing along. And that's going to tell you where the electric and magnetic waves are in, in space and how how strong the electric field and magnetic field is at every single point. So if an equation is a wave equation, it has to satisfy the partial differential equation that's called the wave equation. right? So a function that describes a wave must satisfy these guys, or an equation of this form. You can think of this as uh, down, down to some of those basic physics concepts like waves in a string. If you have a string that's one dimensional, and you propagate any kind of wave through that, the second derivative with respect to time and the second derivative with respect to position are related. They're actually, they're not equal, but they are uh, proportional to each other. There's a, there's a factor one over v squared, where v is the velocity. Over here, we have one over c squared, and c is the speed of light. Isn't that interesting? So the speed, this is actually what Maxwell noted when he was working with these uh, theoretical manipulations of electromagnetism, he actually noted this. He thought, isn't that peculiar that the speed of light appears in these equations? It's almost as if all of these ideas that describe electricity and all of these ideas that describe magnetism, that they also describe optics and light. And that turned out to be true. Electromagnetism is not just a description of electricity and magnetism, but it's also a description of light. So light is an electromagnetic phenomenon. Even in, in classical physics, w without all of the quantum revolution of modern physics, all of electromagnetism actually describes light as well. So optics, even geometric optics, where you have rays of light, that's all described fundamentally by Maxwell's equations and derivations that you can do from Maxwell's equations. So isn't that amazing that electromagnetism describes not only electricity and magnetism, but also light and optics. So light is essentially an electromagnetic wave. So what does it actually mean to be an electromagnetic wave? So we've seen this kind of theoretical representation. But if, if you have a function that describes an electromagnetic wave, it's this multivariate function that sits in three dimensions. And it also depends on time. So it's changing uh, with respect to time. What does that look like? Well, imagine you have a point source. So at some, some point in the universe, there's a point source. And that's a charge that moved up and down. Or you can imagine there's charges in a wire that are moving up and down. That's going to cause electric fields and magnetic fields to change. And as they change, they're actually going to propagate through space. So they can continue to restart each other. Electric fields, magnetic fields can continue to restart each other and to propagate away from the source. So you need some source somewhere which is usually a charge that moves around, or a flow of many charges, which is a current, you need that 
to kick off electromagnetic waves. So where do electromagnetic waves come from? Well, they come from sources of electromagnetic waves. And those sources could be uh, charges moving in a wire. They could be charges just moving around in space. It could be a dipole rotating. Or it could be a single charge moving around or accelerating. Accelerating charges actually produce electromagnetic waves. These are all possibilities where electromagnetic waves are involved. So a common electromagnetic wave example, in fact, one of the simple ones, is a plane wave. And that, that's a good model for light. If light's coming at you uh, and the source is really far away, it's actually a really good model to have a plane wave. So you have planes of the maxima and planes of the minima of the electric field. It's actually easier to measure the electric field uh, than the magnetic field. So that's why the electric field is usually taken uh, as the amplitude, right? But the magnetic field is always there. You can't have an electromagnetic wave without the magnetism. These guys are always uh, talking to each other through these two equations, right? Faraday's law and Ampere's law, they're always dictating how electric fields talk to magnetic fields. And they always uh, swish and swash back and forward with each other. So you can think of it as some kind of fluid, some kind of imaginary fluid that sits in 3D space. That's what these vector fields are like. They're just like fluids. And they swish around, and they actually propagate through three-dimensional space. So these two equations are absolutely fundamental. Another example uh, that is a little more complicated than a plane wave is a spherical wave. So a spherical wave begins at a point source. You have a point source, and then the propagation occurs uh, from, from that point source. And in three dimensions, the only way that can happen uh, is with spherical symmetry. So you have spherical propagation. And sphe spherical waves are also a very good model for uh, sources that are very far away or very small. And then you also have things like cylindrical waves and way more complicated wave patterns. And interference. Interference is actually described by electromagnetism as well. So all of these electromagnetic phenomena actually describe light. So light is an electromagnetic phenomenon. That's the takeaway message from this video. Light is an electromagnetic wave. And the visible spectrum that we can see with our eyes, that is just a small portion of the possible wavelengths that light can be. So microwaves and gamma rays are not in the visible spectrum, but they are still electromagnetic waves. And they are very, uh, they're described very well by classical electromagnetism.